How do organizations function? How can we ensure that everybody knows what is expected from them? At the end of this lecture, you will know how. Governance is most effective when everybody in the organization fulfills a clear purpose and is aware of what is expected of them. For that reason, organizations develop formal roles and responsibilities that describe the individual activities personnel is obliged to perform on a daily basis. Typically, roles are associated to a job title that tell insiders and outsiders what they can expect from them. Each individual has a certain rank within the organization and thus a position within the command and control structure. This is often referred to as hierarchy. Typical ranks include associates, managers, senior managers, directors, vice presidents, and even C-level executives. To achieve the objectives of an organization, it is essential that everybody fulfills their roles and responsibilities. In order to do so, individuals need to possess the necessary skills for their assigned roles and responsibilities. Let's have a quick look at these three elements. Let's start with roles. A role is like a part in a play. It's the specific position or job title a person holds in an organization, such as manager, technician, or customer service representative. Each role comes with its own set of tasks and duties, defining what that person is expected to do. Next, we have responsibilities. Think of responsibilities as the specific tasks or duties assigned to a role. For example, if your role is a project manager, your responsibilities might include planning the project, managing the team, and ensuring deadlines are met. Responsibilities are all about what you are supposed to do in your role and being accountable for the results. Lastly, skills are the abilities or expertise needed to perform these responsibilities effectively. Skills can be technical, like knowing how to code in a particular programming language, or soft skills like communication or leadership. These are the tools you bring to your role to fulfill your responsibilities successfully. Here you can see a couple of typical examples for roles in an organization. We have a chief executive officer, a chief information security officer, a security manager, or an information owner. We will cover the specifics related to these roles, or at least a selection of these roles, in the following lectures. RACI charts, or often called RACI matrices, are a useful tool for clearly defining the roles and responsibilities within an organization. RACI is an acronym derived from the four key responsibilities most typically used. R stands for responsible. This role refers to the individual or individuals who carry out the activity. A stands for accountable. This role designates the person who is ultimately accountable for the activity and responsible for managing those who are responsible for the activity. C stands for consulted. This role encompasses individuals who need to be consulted during the task execution. And finally, I stands for informed. This role includes individuals who need to be kept informed of the task's progress. Now let me give you an example for a RACI matrix. This is what a typical RACI matrix looks like. Each activity is associated with at least one role that holds accountability. It is important to note that accountability cannot be shared or divided, which makes it crucial to assign a clear owner for each task. The purpose of the RACI matrix is to ensure that everyone in the organization understands their responsibilities and obligations, leading to a clear line of communication and effective decision making. By using this matrix, organizations can avoid confusion and overlap of duties, increase productivity and achieve their goals more efficiently. I encourage you to study this example closely and consider how a RACI matrix can be applied in your own organization. Now that we have learned about roles and responsibilities and how organizations can use RACI charts to visualize and coordinate responsibilities, it's now time to learn about the roles you will encounter in the exam. So see you in the next lecture.